microwave bench bench equipment part 2 series on microwave engineering lecture number 6.12 there is a law in the universe it is called rule of impermanence according to this law everything in this world in this universe keep on changing constantly changing the same thing can also be observed by us in our surroundings so it is our experience our everyday experience to see the change in every aspect of life in the universe however it seems there is an exception to this rule in the form of two tools that are used in microwave engineering it seems these two tools defy the rule of impermanence what are they one is microwave bench another is smith chart these two tools aids widely used in microwave engineering design and analysis they have come into being some 90 or 100 years back and they are being used continuously in the last 100 years without any variation or change either in their structure or in their usage there was no competitors even to them it appears to me they are going to be there for several centuries from now onwards they are going to be there maybe forever such is their indispensability such is their ingenuity in providing deep insight into the phenomena that takes place over a transmission line microwave bench is a microwave bench always a bench setup cannot be designed to work at frequencies lower than microwave range or higher than microwave range if one tries to fabricate a bench that works at lower frequencies the dimensions of the bench they become so large that it becomes highly uncomfortable to work with that bench setup similar is the situation with a bench that is to work at frequencies higher than microwaves in this case dimensions of the bench becomes so small now the bench is quite uncomfortable to work with hence bench is a comfortable tool a comfortable arrangement to deal with frequencies that fall in microwave band when frequency is above or below microwave band bench becomes uncomfortable to work with hence microwave bench is a microwave bench bench means microwave bench now we are in the second part second session on microwave bench in this session our focus is on meters wave meter vswr meter these are meters used in the measurement of several quantities with the bench wave meter is meant for measuring frequency directly whereas vswr meter it is designed to measure vswr directly now we move further to the core session with a view to learn deeply about meters and also about some other items which are covered here along with the two meters let us start with a few introductory remarks or statements microwave bench is a waveguide run a cascaded arrangement of several components it is used to measure line parameters like vswr frequency impedance attenuation q power etc at microwave band the source used in the microwave bench is either reflex crystal or gun oscillator. One is tube, first one is tube, microwave tube, second one is 
solid state device wave meter vswr meter and swd swd stands for standing wave detector these are important devices components or parts of the bench setup while measurements are being made now a few points on wave meter what is wave meter it is a frequency measuring instrument and the one that is used here is designed to measure microwave frequencies frequencies falling in x band directly it is x band bench that's why it can measure it can give the frequency only when it is in x band if it is s band bench if it is s band wave meter then it will be able to give frequency when it is in s band either x band s band both are microwave bands only appearance wise it is a cylindrical it is cylindrical in shape carrying a rotary cap over its top and a rotary scale over its surface rotary cap rotary scale over its surface it's cylindrical in shape so it is cylindrical in shape here is a cap it is a rotary cap rotary cap means rotatable rotary scale actually this scale is attached to the cap so when you rotate the cap the scale also rotates the scale is over a cylindrical surface which is attached to the cap therefore scale rotates when the cap is rotated the scale is actually a tuning dial directly calibrated in frequency in the grooves that exist over its surface two rings move upwards when the scale is rotated clockwise and downwards when the rotation is anti clockwise covering the surface there exists a transparent plastic enclosure attached to the fixed base carrying a fixed vertical pointer here is shown a diagram which illustrates the basic features of cavity wave meter this is cavity here is a plunger by moving the plunger up and down the amount of volume of the cavity can be varied and hence its resonant frequency also is varied the cavity is attached to a wave guide run through a small hole iris when wave is traveling in the wave guide run this wave gets absorbed by the cavity when resonant frequency of the cavity tallies with the frequency of the wave traveling in the wave guide run when power in the wave is absorbed by the cavity there exists a dip there exists a decrease in the amount of power flowing past the wave meter this lowering in power level or dip tells us that at a dip the resonant frequency of the cavity is equal to frequency of the wave frequency of the wave can be found can be noted down from the scale which is over the surface of the wave meter the cavity is mounted with its axis perpendicular to the wave guide run and it is coupled to the guide through a small hole iris to prevent resonance at the back of the plunger a block of wave absorbing material like polyron is placed over the back of the plunger by means of proper design and calibration it is possible to make the instrument show frequency or wavelength directly on the micrometer head attached to the plunger or over the surface of the meter the top of the scale in the x band wave meters is indicated by 12.4 and the bottom by 8.2 denoting maximum and minimum frequencies in gigahertz range that can be measured inside the circular cavity exists a movable shot we have already seen attached to the cap allowing the mechanical tuning of the resonant frequency of cavity it is loosely coupled to wave guide through a small aperture while in operation power will be absorbed by the cavity when its resonant frequency becomes equal to frequency of the wave traveling through the guide the absorption can be observed by a dip in the deflection of power meter or vswr meter connected to the system there is a power flow and when resonant frequency becomes equal to frequency of the wave that amount of power gets absorbed by the wave meter so naturally 
there is a decrease in power level but it is momentary this momentary fall in power level is called dip this dip can be observed with eyes using a power meter or vswr meter connected to the power flow fall in power flow it causes fall in the deflection of the point when dip happens as already mentioned the resonant frequency of the cavity is frequency of the wave resonant frequency of the cavity can be found from the scale that is there over the surface of the meter it is a piece of rectangular wave guide now we are in standing wave detector slotted section is an important part a critical part of standing wave detector a few points regarding slotted section it is a rectangular wave guide piece with a non radiating small width slot over its broader wall so this is wave guide piece is a piece ordinary wave guide here is one opening here is another opening broader wall another broader wall narrow wall another narrow wall it becomes slotted section when you cut a slot over the top broader wall a slot this slot is used to insert a sensor a probe into the wave guide the width of this slot should be as small as possible otherwise the wave may escape if it is wide wave escapes into space which we don't want to happen the length of the slotted section is such that it can accommodate at least three minima equal to one guide wave length at the lowest frequency of operation this length is sufficient for making measurements of various quantities with the bench and three minima at lowest frequency at highest frequency wave length it is small or smaller therefore at least one minima in addition to three come into appearance in the slotted section or it may be five also now with a probe that can be inserted through the slot into the guide the field strength in the standing wave pattern is sensed it is essential to maintain signal level sufficiently large so that probe can give the minimum required output with the minimum insertion lower power levels in the bench necessitate too much probe insertion leading to incorrect results larger insertion of the probe cause pattern distortion pattern distortion is one of the sources for erroneous results two widely versions of slotted lines are one with coaxial line another with rectangular wave guide here is shown in the diagram coaxial version coaxial line movable probe slotted coax source end load end by the side of the coax the scale is there higher end lower end the scale is required to know the position of the probe the importance of the scale can be understood from the fact that we need to locate minima in the standing wave pattern we need to know the distance between two consecutive minima in a standing wave pattern in fact this is the procedure whenever we want to know guide wave length from measurement to locate minimas scale is required to find the distance between two consecutive minima scale is required this is coaxial version this is a probe voltmeter it is describing this part this why a small piece of wire it senses the strength of the field gives out a voltage usually the sensor is a square law device the scale here carries lower numbers on load side in some versions lower num numbers are source side and higher numbers are on load side tunable probe a few words regarding tunable probe it is the probe that moves along the length of the slotted section probes are thin conducting wires used to couple power either to or from the wave guides as length can be varied to suit the wave length the probe used here is called tunable probe notice micro bench is not meant for a single frequency if it is x band bench any frequency that falls in the x band must be able to use with microwave bench it implies 
several frequencies are possible. Naturally, the length of the probe, it has to be varied for better response, for better performance. It requires to be varied. As the length can be varied to suit the wavelength or frequency, the probe used here is called a tunable probe. The cap of the tunable probe can be pulled out or pushed in so to match the probe to the wave inside the guide. The probe while being inserted into the slot can also be moved along the slotted section. The probe, this is probe, it can be moved horizontally. Its output is proportional to power of the wave into which it is inserted. In several applications, the output of the probe is given to VSWR meter. In the tunable probe structure for better response, a shot is maintained at a distance of lambda G by 4 from the diode. The diodes of mobile probe give voltage or current proportional to power incident over the surface. So output of the probe is voltage or current whereas input is power. The voltage is proportional to power as far as tunable probes are concerned because they employ square law crystal diode. This fact square law nature is used to measure microwave power ratio with an ordinary ammeter or voltmeter. The relative power P in dB is P equal to 10 log I2 by I1 by I2 or 10 log V1 by V2. In addition to slotted section, tunable probe, standing wave detector consists of vernier scale. A vernier scale is provided along the length of the slotted section to locate the position of tunable probe. Exactly. Thereby, the nodes or anti-nodes of the standing wave pattern. Rack and pinion arrangement. To move the probe and place it exactly at a desired location over the standing wave pattern, a rack and pinion arrangement is attached to the slotted section. Now, VSWR meter. This meter is designed to measure VSWR directly. Wave meter is used or wave meter is designed to measure frequency directly. Indirect method of frequency measurement is also there. But wave meter gives frequency directly. Its scale in the same way VSWR meter is designed to measure VSWR directly. Its scale is calibrated to display VSWR directly. It can also be used as a reference to measure power levels. Most of the measurements require a power level in the bench at which it can give a considerable deflection in VSWR meter when its gain is 30 dB. Notice as far as bench is concerned, the thing that can be explained, the thing that is explainable is a small portion of the complete thing about the bench. Total or at least near total information or grip for the bench, it can be obtained by working with the bench in person, by having a physical contact a touch with the bench equipment. So many adjustments are required to be done before going to the actual measurement procedure. One strange thing, one surprising thing about microwave benches, even after taking all the precautions, even after making all the adjustments, even minute ones also, there is no guarantee that measured quantity is a correct one. If we measure same thing, same quantity, two times or three times with the bench, without much time gap between the measurements, even in such case too, the results differ. The results of the measurements measurement procedures. They give different values. So not just not possible to get the same value on a different measurement. Even then bench is used in the laboratory for illustrating standing wave pattern to students. Now let us move further. Internally the VSW armator consists of an AC amplifier tuned to 1 kHz approximately. To suit to VSWR meter operation, the source output is amplitude modulated by a signal of this frequency. If the source is reflex cluster, the modulation is done internally. And in case of gun oscillator, 
it is performed externally with pin diode vswr meter is fundamentally a voltmeter consisting of a basic meter moment and an amplifier with high gain 60 db so that it can measure even smaller voltages the gain of this amplifier is variable giving a multi range facility to the meter the amplifier is an ac1 ac amplifier and hence it is not associated with any type of drift problems drift problems are associated with the dc amplifier over the front panel of the meter to vary the gain three knobs are provided one to vary the gain in steps of 10 db and the remaining two to vary gain in a continuous manner another knob is useful to set the meter to normal or extend modes a scale non uniform also exists over the front panel it has two parts one is ordinary scale another is db scale ordinary scale is uh, to measure absolute vswr top one carrying 1 to infinity and just below it another one with 3 to 10 so this is the scale here it is 1 here it is infinity so rightmost point is 1 leftmost point is infinity below to it another scale here it is 3 here it is 10 both are non uniform db scale also exists below the ordinary scale to measure vswr in db somewhere here it is 0 at the other end it is 10 in addition both have extended scales to measure accurately the vswr in between 1 to 1.3 or 0 to 2b 1 in db is 0 1.3 in db is 2 these are the things which i have or i want to share with you for right now to recap in the session the focus is mainly on two meters and one detector wave meter vswr meter and standing wave detector hope you have a wonderful and beautiful a transformative and an enriching learning experience hope we meet again soon in another session see you bye bye